Without that album, there would be no Blink, there would be no Neck Deep, there would be no Seaway, there would be no A Day to Remember, there would be no New Found Glory, there would be no Sum 41, there would be no pop punk as we know it. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we are here to answer a very simple question. Who exactly invented pop punk? Spoiler warning, I think there is one band, and actually one album, that's responsible for basically creating the blueprint for what we know as pop punk today. That band is The Descendants. The album is I Don't Wanna Grow Up from 1985. So if that sounds interesting, stick around because I'm gonna break it all down for you in this video. But first, today's video is brought to you by No Wait. How frustrating is it when you show up at a restaurant without a reservation and the wait is hours long? So if you've been wishing that there was a way to avoid that, I'm happy to tell you that now there is. No Wait is an upcoming iPhone app that will allow users to see the current wait times of their favorite bars, clubs, and restaurants in their area. No Wait will allow you to browse multiple places in the same area to find the shortest wait, so you're not gonna waste your only night out standing in line for the same burger that you could get right now at six other restaurants. To stay up to date on release date info by clicking the link in my description below. So thanks again to No Wait for sponsoring this video, and with that out of the way, let's get into it. And she loaned me her cassette of I Don't Wanna Grow Up, and the first song of the descendants that I heard was Silly Girl. It blew my mind. So let me just start by making a confession. I was a terrible skateboarder. Awful. So the truth is that when I would watch skate videos back in the day, honestly, a lot of the times I wouldn't really understand what I was watching. Because this was back in like the early 90s, the era of giant pants and tiny wheels and super, super technical tricks. When it was like some guy in giant green jeans rolling around in a parking lot doing like a switch dance, fakie 180 pressure flip or whatever. All those kind of tricks that all look the same to me. And and yet I watched the videos anyway, mostly as a way of discovering new bands through the songs that people play in their parts. And it was at my friend Alex's house in maybe 91 or 92 in one of the skate videos that I first heard The Descendants when somebody used this song in their part. that song and I was instantly hooked. I'd only been listening to punk and metal for like maybe a year or two at the time. And my favorite band was Suicidal Tendencies followed probably by like Black Flag and the Circle Jerks. And although I was primarily into like the heavier, faster stuff like that, I've always had a soft spot for pop as well. And so this song felt like the perfect combination of those two things, like a Southern California punk sound that I love, but also with a pop sensibility that I just really hadn't heard anywhere else. And I'm sure that there's probably like tens of thousands of people that could tell you the same story that I just did. Because since then, we've heard zillions and zillions of bands cite them as an influence. And that sort of leads me to the point that I'm making today, which is that I think if you were to come up with one band that would be like the template for modern pop punk, I think it's The Descendants. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about here, just to give you an example, listen to this. And this. But it goes way beyond just that. It's actually pretty crazy how many of the like super specific lyrical themes and sonic characteristics of pop punk that they pioneered. But before I get into exactly what those are, first, let me just kind of give you a little bit of context about where they came from to understand why they were so unique and special. The thing to understand is that although now it's pretty much just accepted as part of the scene, pop punk was definitely not always a thing. Especially back in like 1981 when the Descendants put out their first release, which was the Fat EP. Let me know in the comments if you remember differently, but I can't recall a band identifying as pop punk until, I don't know, probably sometime in the mid 90s. Yes, there were punk bands that were like catchy and upbeat and melodic, but they were just that. Punk bands that happened to be on the more melodic side of things. As a few examples you might be familiar with, the Ramones, obviously, Buzzcocks, and my personal favorite, Generation X, featuring a very young Billy Idol. But there's two reasons why I don't really think of those bands as pop punk per se. The first one being that they weren't actually trying to sound poppy. Yes, if you listen to it now, they sound kind of poppy, but they definitely weren't in the context of 1978 against what was popular at the time, such as ABBA or the Bee Gees. Like compared to that stuff, what they were doing is pretty wild shit. Really, they were just punk. It's just that punk in 1977 sounded much poppier than what we would think of as punk today. Just wanna love like any other, what do I get? 
And second, if you listen to like more modern pop punk bands, like say anything from Blink-182 to State Champs to MXPX, I don't actually think they sound all that much like the Buzzcocks or Generation X. Those bands to me are really just an evolved form of like bluesy rock and roll. Almost kind of something like you would hear in the 50s, just kind of amped up a little bit. That said, The Descendants were not the only ones kind of taking punk in a popular direction. There were bands like The Replacements and Husker Du that were starting with the foundation of punk and deliberately pushing it in a more like melodic direction. I mean, listen to this. To me, that is super clearly the foundation of the more like shouty, jangly version of pop punk that a band like Real Friends or Knuckle Puck is doing today. That said, I would say Replacements and Husker Du and all those kind of bands were really more part of the, the college rock scene than punk. Bands like R.E.M. and The Cure and The Pixies, all that kind of stuff. The college rock scene was completely separate from the punk scene. And as a 13 year old, I was really uptight about that stuff. And I wanted nothing to do with college rock or anything that Spin Magazine thought was cool. So Husker Du, Replacements, Sonic Youth, all that stuff, like hated it. You'll dance to anything by the Smith. And one more name that definitely needs to be mentioned is Dag Nasty, who actually shared several members of the Descendants. And I absolutely love Dag Nasty, especially their later stuff, but I can't really say that they laid the foundation for pop punk for two reasons. First of all, they came out several years after The Descendants. The first Dag Nasty album came out in, I think, 85, four years after The Descendants EP came out. And second, they weren't really a punk band per se in the sense that hardcore and punk are kind of separate things. But that said, I would give them credit for pioneering what we would call melodic hardcore today. As the kids these days say, Dag Nasty walked so AFI could run. So while there were certainly bands exploring similar kind of territory, to me what made the Descendants so special is that first of all, they were most definitely part of the punk scene. I mean, their drummer was also in fucking Black Flag. They were on SST. You know, their peers were not like the Pixies and Sonic Youth and all that shit. Their peers were the Circle Jerks, Dead Kennedys, Bad Religion, those sort of bands. And that was my shit. And so that was what was so appealing to me, that they were 100% authentically part of the punk scene, but doing something that was a lot more melodic and accessible and punk, but kind of pop, pop punk. So that's kind of the bigger context here. And what it comes down to, I think, is that if I had to pick one single album that formed the blueprint for what we think of as pop punk, it would be the Descendants 1985 album, I Don't Wanna Grow Up. Without that album, there would be no Blink, there would be no Neck Deep, there would be no Seaway, there would be no A Day to Remember, there would be no Newfound Glory, there would be no Sum 41, there would be no pop punk as we know it. So what am I talking about? Well, let me get specific. First of all, like I kind of talked about before, they 100% invented that sonic template that would go on to be the basis of bands like Blink and A Day to Remember, and then rappers who were influenced by Blink and A Day to Remember, such as Smart Death, Lil Aaron, Lil Peep, Shinigami, all those like face tattoo, colored hair kind of rappers from the suburbs. I mean, listen to this Descendants song. Compared to this. And then this. Diamonds on my wrist. Shotty scream my name, so I signed it on her tits. Yeah. And I'm sure back in 1985 or whatever, they never dreamed that they would be influencing rappers 35 years later, but hey, here we are. It happened. But that is just the beginning of it. What's most interesting to me is not just like the musical side of things, but so many of the other, I guess you would call it like lyrical themes or cultural norms they established 35, 40 years ago that are still part of pop punk today. The most important one I would say is that the Descendants
sense, made it okay to be, I guess for lack of a better word, relatively normal and not edgy in the punk scene. Now, you might think that being a PG-13 guy in the pop punk scene now is not very remarkable, and it isn't. But remember, the Descendants came out of that like early 80s Southern California, LA punk scene, which was kind of fucked up. It was not chill, it was not particularly safe, and they were right in the heart of it, playing with bands like DRI, Suicidal Tendencies, and Excel, the bands known for having the most fucked up violent shows. They were right there in the middle of it doing their like Beach Boys thing. They were like this punk rock Beach Boys. If you've ever hung out with people like this, you'll know what I mean. I feel like the Descendants are like the one square kid that grew up on the same block as a bunch of gangsters. And so because of that, he's cool with them and they're cool with him and everybody gets along, even though they're like going in totally different directions with their lives. Because even though they were like part of the scene, the stuff they were talking about was like the polar opposite of the rest of the bands. Maybe the most obvious example of that to me is that their first album was called Milo Goes to College because their singer Milo was going away to college to pursue a PhD in biology from UC San Diego. Diego. You know, I want to rock out. I want to be like a punk rock guy. But I also have this really strong ambition to be a scientist. So while other bands like Black Flag, for example, were writing songs about like fighting the cops, the Descendants were writing songs like this one, GCF or Good Clean Fun, which yes, this did inspire the name of the band. one of my personal favorite Descendants songs. Or as another example, where the first Suicidal Tendencies album, the cover is made up of all these like gnarly drawings of like people getting cut in half and shit and all this like gang stuff. The first Descendants album from a year earlier has a cartoon character in glasses and a tie on the cover. And that dynamic really resonated with me because although I grew up with and I've been around a lot of fucked up dark shit, that was a side of life that I always resisted, that I always wanted to stay away from. My mom was an alcoholic. My stepsister died from an OD when we were 20. I have a bunch of uncles that did time for various shit. A few friends that went to prison. So for better or for worse, it's kind of always been part of my life, but I didn't like it. It wasn't appealing to me. So when I heard bands embracing all that self-destructive shit, it just kind of turned me off. Even if I like their music. I guess for lack of a better way to put it, yes, I was into punk, but I really just wanted like kind of a normal life. And so the Descendants really spoke to me because they kind of had a foot in both worlds just like I did. I liked school just like Milo did. You know, I was on the debate team in high school. I did the school paper. I liked going to school. Like I didn't want to go shoot heroin in the bathroom or get in a fight with the cops. I just wanted to go to school and maybe get a girlfriend. And speaking of the girlfriend thing, that actually brings me to the second thing that I think the Descendants really pioneered, which is a really big one. They were one of the very first American punk bands, or at least the first ones that I encountered, that wrote songs about girls. And not like edgy, cynical ones, but songs that were, I guess for lack of a better word, sweet. Like before I got into the Descendants, the only punk band I knew that had a song about girls was Suicidal Tendencies Won't Fall In Love Today. not exactly the sweetest song in the world. And that just didn't resonate with me at all because even at a young age, I had seen how dysfunctional that could be. My mom was married four times. And from a very young age, I knew I did not want to be like that. So I was much more into descendant songs like this one. Or this one. Or this one. These were guys in a cool punk band painting a picture of a pretty normal, like happy romantic relationship, which was really appealing to me as somebody that didn't have a lot of examples of that in my life. Love and marriage, love and marriage. That said, I do think we have to talk about how they popularized another trope that ended up being really popular in like the 2010s, like sad boy era of pop punk, which is the thing where they write some song about how a girl rejected them and they get super butt hurt and paint themselves as the victim and say a bunch of nasty shit about her. I think of it as nice guy core, like all those cringy nice guy memes from a few years ago when the fedora wearing nice guys were a thing. Probably the best example of that is the song Sour Grapes. What? but they actually had quite a few songs along these lines. For example, Clean Sheets, Hope, and 80s Girl, among others. Yeah, she's an 80s girl, looking out for herself. So when you draw the line, between a whore and a concubine, 
pretty cringy on its own, right? But it gets especially like, eh, when you consider that they also had lyrics like this. Now, just to be clear, I'm not trying to like cancel them over some lyrics they wrote 30 or 35 years ago. I'm sure that they're not especially stoked on those lyrics today. And I also recognize that there's probably some element of like sarcasm or tongue in cheek or irony in those lyrics, but those songs are still pretty cringy. And I think that they probably encourage some lame thinking on the part of dudes and pop punk bands that you saw in a fair amount of songs from like those 2010s pop punk bands. Probably the most obvious examples being Mount Diablo or High Regard by the story so far. But that said, I do want to give them some credit for writing what's probably the most like positive, healthy, mature breakup song I've ever heard. One of my favorite underrated descendant songs, Pep Talk. So anyway, if you put all those things together, what you see is that they 100,000% invented that whole like well-meaning nerdy guy with a heart of gold who keeps getting his heart broken and getting fucked over by girls again and again and again that all these bands would end up running with decades later. And I know I've already brought Blink-182 up a million times, but I kind of have to because they are a hugely influential, hugely successful band. And in a lot of ways, they're just like Descendants 2.0. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all, because in addition to sounding like the Descendants, they also picked up on another part of what the Descendants pioneered, which is the whole like pop punk man child thing, which was like the entire basis for Blink-182 and Sum 41 and Newfound Glory and a whole bunch of those other like mid-2000s what I call TRL core bands because they were on the MTV show TRL all the time. So what am I talking about? Well, aside from the fact that they had an entire album called I Don't Want to Grow Up, essentially what they had was this mix of like pop punk love songs combined with a bunch of basically like lighthearted, silly dick and fart joke songs. And not that they were like the first punk band to have silly songs by any means. I mean, there's Peter and the Test Tube Babies and a million other bands, but I I do think that their particular like PG-13 American Pie sort of flavor of it, I do think that is uniquely a creation of the Descendants. As a couple of examples, I want to be a bear, I like food, and parents, which is literally like, shut up dad, I hate you, get out of my room. Or the fact that they had an entire album named after this song about farting. Oh, and they also had this song about farting. That's it? It was wet. Let's listen to it. And they talked about farting again in this song. He who bears the most gas. Let him also bear forth his ass. As you can see, girls and farts are kind of the two central themes in their lyrics. What happened to songs about farts? Can we please bring that back? So to answer the question I asked in the title, did the Descendants invent pop punk? I would say yes. They probably invented like 70 or 80% of what we would call pop punk today. Especially that like Blink-182, Sum 41, New Found Glory, American Pie kind of flavor that would end up being by far the most popular and influential version of it. So, so much of what we think of as pop punk came straight out of their catalog in the 80s. So if you're a fan of pop punk and you haven't checked out their old stuff, definitely do yourself a favor, dig into that. All their stuff on SST before they're on Epitaph, I think is the much better stuff. Still holds up today. If you're not sure where to start, I would pick up their 1991 compilation album called Summary. Kind of like a greatest hits of the early years. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Did the Descendants essentially single-handedly invent modern pop punk? I also wanna thank everyone who supports me on Patreon at the true cult level or above. Thanks to you guys, I was finally able to get my podcast off the ground. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but just honestly didn't have time to like record it and edit it and publish it and like all the other kind of administrative stuff that goes into producing a podcast. So thanks to you guys and your support, I was able to hire an editor, Deanna Chapman. She's doing an awesome job. That's gonna launch in January so stay tuned for that and thank you again to my patrons for making that possible if you're interested in supporting me on patreon there's a link in the description below and i'm going to sign off for now but i will see you next time